Puzzle games are a huge societal problem. They make boomers play video games, that's just unacceptable. These things are absolutely everywhere. On the app stores with way too many downloads, on the highest grossing mobile games list, on ads on your mom's phone behind you, they're like a summer ant. It keeps coming back. However, an even more common species of puzzle games are the match-free games, and now these things are so common to the point that it feels like there are 15 ants for gardenscapes outside your house. Question is, what led to this? The beginning of mobile match-free games and puzzle games as a whole can be traced back all the way to the Big Bang. And 1984 with the release of the biggest puzzle game ever, Tetris. You ever realize how after the release of Tetris society went to shit? An absolute classic game, it's so simple yet so engaging. Take this shape, line it up, form a line and boom, you're a f***ing genius. It was a massive success and got ported to basically every piece of hardware that exists and is one of the best selling video games of all time. Another game that was released one year later was Chainshot, which required you to clear the board by removing groups of adjoining blocks of the same color by clicking on them. And as you can see from the footage, it's actually really similar to many modern day puzzle games like Angry Birds Dream Blast. So with both of these games, it was obvious that developers would try to put their own spin on the puzzle game genre, which in 1989 led to Collins, in which you control falling stacks of three differently colored gems with the goal of lining up three or more of the same colors in a horizontal, vertical or diagonal line. And as you can guess from that last bit, this game actually influenced countless future puzzle games. The rights to this title were sold to Sega the following year, which quickly brought the game to arcade machines and the Genesis, and even became a pack-in title on the Game Gear due to its popularity. Another puzzle game that was released that same year was Puznik by Taito, which tasked the player with getting rid of every block on the screen by combining two blocks of the same symbol. For some reason, at the end of each level, the game revealed something that somehow gets past YouTube's censorship, which was certainly a very interesting design decision. Five years later, they released a game called Puzzle Bubble, which features characters from Bubble Bubble, and in this title, you use this launcher at the bottom to shoot shapes at other shapes of the same color. This game inspired Bubble Witch Saga, the first saga title from King, released in 2011. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves here and instead go back to 1994, which was the year when society was at the edge of collapsing. Really, just a tiny step from total destruction, thanks to one event the release of the first match-free game. Before 1994, many games were experimenting with different styles of color and shape matching, but a small game by a Russian programmer with this fun name would revolutionize the whole color and shape matching industry, and that game was called Shariki, which translates to the balls. Good. You ever notice how after the release of Balls Society went to shit? And as you can see from the gameplay, this game was a match-free game, who would've thought? This game is very bare-bones, all you have is a bunch of circles, a score counter and a lack of will to live. However, in 2001, the mobile match-free puzzle game industry absolutely skyrocketed with the release of Bejeweled by PopCap, developers of Plants vs Zombies. Yeah, it's a match-free game, alright. Compared to Shariki, the differences are mainly in the presentation, because this game has graphics while that game has kinda graphics. Match-free colorful gems in a line to increase your score? And that's it. But hey, it got over 350 million downloads, so it must have done something, right? And as always, with a big success comes a big wave of clones. Puzzle Quest Challenge of the Warlords, Aurora Faint the Beginning, Puzzle Craft, Puzzle and Dragons, and in 2012 Candy Crush Saga by King, aka the one-stop shop for match fees and very little else. I think it's fair to say that King has pretty much a monopoly in the mobile match free games industry because this game has almost 3 billion downloads. Sure, they make other puzzle games too, but they're pretty much known mainly for Candy Crush Saga and how much money it makes. And after Candy Crush Saga, tons and tons of other match free games kept getting pumped out, flooding the app store shelves, which led us to where we are now. And that's pretty much it for the history of the match free genre, which means it's time to analyze and review some games. I will be playing only mobile match free games, so no bejeweled PC version, shariki and whatnot, just what's available on the Google Play Store. I chose 17 random match free games, mostly well known ones but also a more obscure title here and there, and after playing each game I'm gonna put it on this screen, top left is the best, bottom right is the worst, and the games go from left to right. So we might as well start this fun journey off with a classic match free game bejeweled. So first thing I noticed, pretty much after opening the game I get an ad, so that's just great. Then I played the game and like, it's fine, but something about it just feels off. The game, it's... it's just...
Next up, let's try the probably biggest match free game ever, Candy Crush. This one's pretty alright. The graphics feel a little old, but it's fine. It's a match free game after all. Kinda hard to screw up, but I gotta say, this voice scares the sh out of me. Goodbye, sweet, tasty. Also, the music makes me feel like an idiot. Overall, it's alright, but nothing special. Candy Crush Soda Saga. It's really nothing special, the only things I can think of to say here is that the world map is kinda ass and the scary voice is back, and the music still makes me feel stupid. I'd say this sits below Candy Crush Saga. Candy Crush Jelly. It has the same fun quirks of the previous two games, but in this one the level designs are pretty interesting. Did I just say that? This one is going in between both of these. Now the last Candy Crush game, Candy Crush Friends. Other than the characters all looking idiotic, this one is probably the best out of all the Candy Crushers. One thing that stood out especially is the 3D level map, which honestly looks really cool. Other than that, it's just Candy Crush. Gardenscapes. This one takes a more interesting turn. Instead of just matching freeze, you now get to interact with some sh**. Your job is to help Mr. Austin over here rebuild his garden. You gotta earn money to buy things for the garden and to earn money you gotta play some match 3 levels. If only real life was that simple. So yeah, I'm just having fun rebuilding this garden and I knew something was up with this guy. Yeah, for some reason this game doesn't really work with blue stacks, so I had to deal with a lot of graphical glitches. This is what nightmares are made of. Also the visual design is kinda odd. By that I mean, would you trust a man with this face? And also the music makes me feel like a dumbass again. If only there was an action-packed match-free game with an equally action-packed soundtrack. So overall, what do I think of this game? Homescapes is quite similar to Gardenscapes, but now you are rebuilding a house, who would've thought? Yeah, this is pretty much just Gardenscapes but in a different setting. However, you are immediately introduced to two other characters, which makes the game feel less lonely. Which is why it's going in. Farmscapes is quite similar to Gardenscapes and Homescapes, but guess what we are rebuilding now? The Soviet Union! This time the main character actually looks more like a normal human being. The music is a bit nicer too, but uh... This isn't even a match free game, this is a blast game! I mean technically blast games are match free games too, since you gotta match free or more, but right now I'm talking about only the pure match free games, so unfortunately this game is gonna be in... Wildscapes is quite similar to Gardenscapes, Homescapes and Farmscapes, but this time we're not rebuilding, but rather building a zoo, I think. Big difference. I played some Zoo Tycoon games back in the day, so this might be nostalgia talk, but in my opinion, this one is the best from the Scape series and because of that it's going in. Now it's time for some Rovia offerings and see how they spice up the genre. In general, all of Rovia's puzzle games are associated with their downfall, that they were just trying to profit off of Facebook moms. And that's... Probably correct. And the first Rovio puzzle game was released in 2015, Angry Birds Pop. But the first match game was Nibblers. Also, am I the only one that thinks the game sounds like a racial slur? Just curious. Anyways, the game is actually pretty alright. You play as this ocean dog that found some fruit, and your goal is to help him get even more fruit. I guess. The art style is nice to look at, the sound design is pleasant, the gameplay is snappy and feels good, it's all quite decent. If you're looking for a no bullshit to the point match free experience, you should try this one out. Next up is Angry Birds Match, and am I allowed to be disappointed? With Angry Birds in the title I expected a lot more than this. This is just a random beach themed match free game with an Angry Birds coat of paint. Like, what is there to do? You can check your hatchling collection. Awesome, you can't have an Angry Birds match free game without checking your hatchling collection, so thank god they added that. And Matilda is selling drugs in the pirate chests I guess. So like, the game, it just feels off. It's... it's just... Now for the last Rojo match 3, Small Town Murders. I gotta say, this one is actually pretty interesting. Basically, the game tells you a story about crimes in a small town, and to progress through the story, you have to play match 3 levels. This is the first match 3 game I've played that actually gives me a reason to keep playing, wow. And the music didn't make me feel stupid either. So overall, I'd say this game delivers. I don't know why, but it feels like a game is missing from here. A certain Angry Birds spin-off called Angry Birds Fight, a match-free game with action-packed and fun PvP gameplay, great visuals and soundtrack. Yeah, the reason that's the case is because the game got discontinued, yeah. But now Angry Birds Fight is coming back in the fan project called Angry Birds Fight Reboot, which aims to bring back guess what, just guess, think real hard, not the Soviet Union, but Angry Birds Fight. And if you want to download the game, join their Discord server from the link in the description. Also, this game is going right here. Time for some good old Matchmasters, the game that just keeps getting advertised. And I couldn't get it to open up for some reason, so I guess it's going in. 
Next up is Fish Dim, another Playrix creation, like the Escapes games, because only they could do it. So you know those fake ads where you like have a number, enemies with other numbers, and you have to go to enemies with a lower number than yours? Well this time the ads aren't fake and this game actually has these things, and they are mini games after completing some much free levels I think. You can also build an aquarium and make it look nicer, so that's fun I guess. So for the gameplay variety, this one is going in. After opening Harry Potter puzzles and spells, you need to input a name and choose a wand. I'm choosing this one because it's hard and 12 and a half inches long. Then you get this chest and guess what's in the chest, a match free level of course. Yeah there's nothing special about this game, it really does just exist and nothing else. For that reason it's going into... Now time for best friends. Jumping into the game we see a normal match free game, completely normal, nothing wrong with it. You just match free tiles like in any other game I discussed before and enjoy the game. And for that reason it's going right here. And the last game is going to be empires and puzzles. So in this game you match three or more to defeat waves of enemies. Some colors are less or more effective against specific enemy colors. You can also build up an ultimate move. There's a map with tons of levels, summoning new heroes. There's a lot in this game. But because of the base building and summoning heroes it's probably pretty grindy or long. So while well, not really my cup of tea, I'm gonna put it over here. There's one game I wanted to but couldn't go over, Subway Surfers Match. Reason being it's not available in my country and I really don't wanna go through the hassle of downloading a region locked match free game. So overall, are these really the downfall of society? Kinda. There are a few fun games here and there but most of the time it's just the same sh over and over again with maybe two different polygons. The gameplay of a good match free game can be quite addicting, but it's still weird how these things essentially became a worldwide phenomenon. Also I swear to god, if I see one more popular IP get turned into a match free game I'm gonna lose my shit. If you enjoyed this video be sure to check out this one, it's like the one you're watching right now but for bad piggies, I guess. Also leave a like, subscribe and have a wonderful day.